All right, everybody, <clears throat> welcome back. Um, I'm gonna make a little video here for my buddy Darren. <clears throat> um, one of the keys to making money in farming is not spending any money. The more money you spend, the longer it takes before you make any money. And so I'm just gonna make a little video here for him, um, kind of give him some ideas on how we can get started for fairly cheap. And I'm thinking minimal, you know, <clears throat> spending money minimally, you're going to make money faster. So I'm just going to make a little video here on my idea. I'm sure there's going to be all kinds of other people with different ideas and advice and thoughts, criticism, whatever. And that's fine. Leave them in the comments. Darren can read the comments too. But this is my thinking. I'm a small farm. I, I only run a little over 100 acres. So, <clears throat> obviously, anybody can go on any uh, co-op website and see what markets are and do the math on about what I make a year. So, but in my, my thinking is spend little because you're not going to make a lot. So, the less you spend, the more you make in the end because you're not just paying bills. But anyways, so... This shed, I call it the vet shed. My wife calls it the horse barn. It doesn't much matter what you call it, <clears throat> but this shed is 30 feet wide, give or take. When I am done with this addition, it will be 50 feet long. <clears throat> so this is really all you need to have cattle. If it were me, I would set up a building like this where you want it, and then I would just set up windbreaks. And honestly, with the layout that I have, I'm gonna show you why I would set it out this way. Let's say you have a machine shed, you can use that as a wind block. You can set your pens up here, just for a windbreak. And then beyond it, just throw up a windbreak. And then if you just set posts along there where you can run cattle in, just to kind of contain them, you can set up an alley like that to single file them in. And then if you set up the inside of your shed, which I'll show you, you can set it up so you have different return alleys back to different pens or for loadout. You don't need a roof over their head. I mean, look at Ted. Look at, you know, Anderson. Look at all these guys. They have hundreds of cattle that don't have a roof over their head. You don't have to have a roof. Um, Northern Farmer. You don't have to have a roof over the cow's head. Just build some calf sheds where the calves can go and get out of the snow if you're going to have calves in the wintertime. Um, I just so happen to have the lean to I put it to use. Um... I might actually set up just windbreaks back there and do whatever. I'm uncertain yet. But if you're trying to get started farming, you don't have money, do not spend the money on buildings. Throw up a windbreak, set up some pens, build a little building like this so you don't have a lot of money into, but you have the facilities to work your cattle. Um, <clears throat> so like I say, just windbreaks, the pens outside that you can get in and out of easy for feeding, and then your shed, this, I'm calling it the vet shed, have... I have water run out here, I have power run out here, and soon I'm going to have Wi-Fi run out here. Um, but as you can see, I have my chute, I have this alley that I built out of an old calving pen <clears throat> that I can swing this gate to run cows back out this way, whether I want to run a cow into this pen or one of these other pens or back out to pasture. I can take those two OSB boards off, there's a gate on the other side, I can run steers out that way, so I would swing this other gate here in, that would run my steers back out to their pen, or I can have them both closed here for loadout. I am going to add this right now while we're talking about it. Very, very soon, this, where that right there, this post is, I'm moving this whole thing over to that post and going to make a new door there. So I can shift everything over that two and a half, three feet, because then it'll be wide enough in here that I can drive the gator straight through the center. <clears throat> so my plan is that's when I'm going to build steel out the back here to these outside posts. I move everything over that three feet or two and a half feet, whatever it is. So it'll give me more room down the center. But so this here, I'll have these three calving pens, and technically, in your situation. You're not married, you don't have a female in your life, you don't have a horse, here's another calving pen. You know, um, these pens here can be used for other things during the summer, you know, 
storing feed or whatever, raising pigs. And like with my shed here, this is going to be for hay storage or bedding. Um, if you just have some bedding for your calving pens, I've got storage for that right here. And then if you just have the windbreak, have it all set up where you can run them here. That's all you need for cattle. You don't have to have big fancy sheds and barns and crap like that. I mean, um, <clears throat> if you just set it up so you have water out here, pipe water over to whatever. Honestly, I wouldn't even bury water. Just run a line above ground in a black tubing like what I have and let it trickle feed all the time. Just get a big enough stock tank that it's not running over all the time. Have your power run to it. And honestly, if I was pulling my water out of this building, I'd have my stock tank right here and a feeder panel and a gate. Everybody can drink out of one tank. It runs continuous. Moving water doesn't freeze. So as long as you have your trickle rate set high enough, it's not going to freeze. Um, if the well pump quits working, that's another story. That's why I have it inside black tube. I can technically put a hair dryer on one end and blow hot air all the way through there and thaw it out. Um, or if you have one of them cattle uh, showing back things that blows hot air, that would work even better. But, so back to the building here. That's all I would have for a building. I wouldn't, <clears throat> I, I, I don't even know <sighs> if I'm going to build another building, just use what I have to set up wind breaks. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I don't really plan to add much more for my cows because most of the time, 99% of the time, even when it's 30 below and windy, they might hide in the corner. But even on days that it's raining or snowing, they're not underneath that roof. Half the time, they're out there in the middle of winter. Well, if they're standing out in the middle of that field, why am I investing money into a building for them? Obviously, they don't need it. That's It's just a choice that I give them. But I would just set up windbreaks, set up your working facilities. The working facilities are number one. Um, and then in here... Like I say, I have power run out here. I guess you guys call it hydro, which I find that funny. To me, it's electricity. It's power. But I have power run out here. Once I get this addition done, there's going to be power run all the way to the end. I have lights out here all over. I mean, I can add more lights if I want. I have just I always just use outlets and the plug-ins that you screw a bulb into. Because now I can plug uh, like a brooder lamp or whatever into there. And I can clip it on anywhere here and have light wherever I want it. Same in here. I've got lights in here. You know, I got to finish this shed. I, I want to get that closed off so the birds don't come in here. But I mean, I've got power out here. My wiring isn't pretty. I'm not, I'm not uh, picky about a lot of things. You know, the radio out here. Fence charger out here. That one doesn't work. It's just hanging there for looks. Right in here. There's my water. It's just PEX tubing that comes from the house. It actually comes from the well house. And I don't know if you're going to be able to see in there. Turn my light on, maybe. It says it's on, but it's not. Um, let me grab my flashlight and see if I can shine that in there so you guys can see better. But as you can see, I have an outlet right there. There's just PEX tubing with a 90 degree shutoff valve. And then that power, that cord there runs down to the Ruger lamp down in the bottom with a, a 100 watt bulb in it. That keeps that ground, the, thought, the line thought out down there. That's all I have. So there I have water out here. It'd be nothing to take and tee into that and run water anywhere in this whole barn right off of that line coming in here. So I've got power, I've got water, Everything is all in this one building. So I, I could tear down all my other buildings. If a storm come through, not took everything out, I could just throw up two wind, you know, a windbreak over there, and it wouldn't affect my cattle at all, as long as this building's still here. Everything is here. So if I were you, I would just build a building like this that can house, like in there. I mean, there's vet, vet stuff in there for... You know, if the cattle needs a shot or something, um, my plan is to put shelves over here, or cabinets over here with all that stuff in, and it's right next to the chute. Um, like I say, I'm going to move that over. It's still going to give me four plus feet on that side. Plenty of room for me to be over there, because all i got to do is run the chute and run out that door to help push cattle in, 
and I do everything from right here. And you're a welder, and find gates and square tubing and build your stuff, get a nice head lock like that. And then all I did with mine, you can see here, I added this to it so I can run it from the backside. Because if you know cattle, you understand cattle. If you're standing in front of them, they don't want to come forward. Well, this way, I can be walking in behind them, pushing them up. I can grab this handle right here and close my chute from back here. Naturally, they want to keep going because I'm behind them. Uh, that's, I'd invest your money into a, a facility like this and not into a great big fancy schmancy barn because the big fancy schmancy barn ain't going to make you a whole hell of a lot of money. Um, concrete is great. I can't afford it yet. Eventually I want my lots all concrete where I'm feeding when it's muddy. Um, and then on this side where the steers are all summer. Um, otherwise, you know, you just a wind block from the north. And honestly, if I didn't have the shed, I'd probably do a wind block all the way along the north. <clears throat> and then extend it over here on the west side. And then the same over here on the east side or plant trees. Um... And then I just have my alley that goes out to the different pastures and the fields. I can put my cows wherever. The whole farm is fenced. I can put my cows literally wherever I want on this farm. So that's what I would do. That leaves you so many options for doing different things. Different crops, different grazing practices. You know, you can, I don't know. It's That's what I would do if it were me. And yeah, this shed is only 30 wide by 50 long when it's done. Right now, this is like 20... 20, a little over 20 feet long and the addition is 30 so it might be a little over 50 feet long when it's done but you wouldn't even have to have it that big if you don't have a horse that's taking up you know a 16 foot area of it um because her pen in here is 16 foot by 14 foot you know but biggest thing is just having it set up so you can work the cattle um, honestly, if you've got trees, you don't even have to have a wind block if you can get to it to feed them all winter. But biggest thing is you need a place where you can group them up for running them through the chute, separating them, vaccinating, castrating, load out, that type of thing. So, if I were you, I would think cheap. The less money you invest into here, the more money you can invest into cattle or equipment for putting up feed. Um, you don't have to have a shed to put a hand. Really just stack it outside and honestly don't even stack a single road. I stack mine because I'm trying I'm limited on space. Um I should just get off my butt one of these days around the town and get tarps covered, it'd be a whole lot better. I just for some reason never think to do that the day that it's sunny out, and then before I know it it's raining and then I'm going crap, I never cover the hay again. And it's kinda doesn't make a whole lot of sense to cover it when it's wet. <clears throat> so anyways, that's what I would do. Um you know, and honestly, if you put trusses or actual engineered rafters in here versus the way I'm going to do a center post, you could just throw up temporary gates in here for dividers here and then gates this way just chained together. Um, and during the summer, you could take them all down and you could fill this full of hay and then just, you know, when most people don't calve until spring, if you put hay in here, you know, feed the hay out of here or whatever, and then you've got your area open up, throw up your gates, and you're ready for calving. Um, it's the only thing I plan to put in here is new heifers when they're calving. The older cows, experienced cows, I don't worry about it. So, honestly, you don't really have to have calving pens or that many. You know, honestly, I probably don't even need this addition. The horse, I could kick her out, you know, it's just I hate dinking around with that. So I'm putting this addition on. But, and then it also gives me room to put hay in here. So her hay is inside, because right now, if you look at this disaster, her hay is out front with a tarp over it. And it looks like crap. I hate dealing with that stupid tarp. You know, the hay falls off, falls underneath the tarp, gets covered in snow. It's just a big pain in the butt. So this is going to be in there on concrete, inside dry. This will disappear. And eventually, when we pour the concrete around here, I want to pour apron around the front as well. And when I move this door opening over, 
I need to figure this out and put a door here that we can open and close so the wind doesn't blow through here all winter. But that's where I would invest my money in if I were you. Um, one working facility and then just wind breaks. You'll be a lot farther ahead. Then after you're making money, then invest in whatever the hell you want to. But before you're making money, I wouldn't invest into anything more than you have to. And honestly, a working facility is a need if you're going to have cattle. Uh, you could struggle through, hate, you know, getting big arguments with whoever you have come over and help you when you're fighting cattle or jumping gates and everything. Set up like this. They don't jump gates. They can't. So it flows through smooth. So that's what I would do if I were you. Hopefully this gives you some ideas. Um, anybody else has ideas, throw them in the comments. Everybody can see them. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe thinking cheap isn't the right way to go. But I don't know. That's just the way I feel about it. So instead of spending money into building a $150,000 barn, $150,000 buys you a lot of head of cattle and a lot of equipment for putting up crops to feed those cattle truck and trailer to haul them you don't have to have grain bins and everything else you don't even have to have a hay shed it can be outside corn silage pile it on the dirt somewhere and cover with plastic that don't have to have a silo you know if you're just doing cow calf and selling spring feeders you don't have to even feed them grain corn silage and hay that's what most guys around here do and i'm telling you what they're selling 800 to 1,000 pounds of spring calves they didn't feed them any grain just good quality hay and good corn silage is all they need. The grain is in the corn silage, you know. They don't have money tied up in the storage for feed or whatever. So um, that's what I would do. If you want to be a grain farmer, well, there I wouldn't even spend the money on bins or dryers because by the time you spend all that money on that crap, you can pay to store and dry a lot of feed at the local elevator, co-op, whatever you want to call it. Um... And then if there's any grain loss or spoilage after it's there, it's on them. It's not on you, you know. I just, I don't know. It's You kind of got to think cheap. If you want to start out making money and you don't have any in farming, you can't, can't be finding ways to spend money. You got to be finding ways to save it. So, anyways, like I say, just wind blocks. One small shed for working cattle in and that type of thing. Get your power and water to it. It's all you need. So... Anyways, hope that gives you some ideas. Hopefully uh, things change with your situation there. And I wish you the best of luck, buddy. Catch you later.